Hi, I'm Nate Moore. This is Excel video 128. What we're going to do today is look at some physicians and 2010 referrals and I want to show you what's called a pie of pie chart. So I'm going to highlight this data here, go to insert and in the pie menu, you see this pie of pie? There it highlights for me. What it will do is it will take a pie chart and then you can choose a fraction or a piece or some component of your original pie and break that out and show the detail of this piece here that's kind of a blue-gray in this second pie chart. The way we've got it set up now is a little bit goofy, but we can tweak this a little bit and I can show you how this can be helpful. If you right-click any place in here and go to Format Data Series, what it's going to do up here at the top is Split Series By, and the first option is By Position, so what you can do is take the last four physicians in my list and it say I'm gonna take these last four and throw those guys into the second pie. You and if you've got your data ordered that way that's gonna work. Another way you can do it is by value and you say alright now what I want is every second plot contains all values less than let's say a hundred referrals. If you close that now what it's gonna do is say okay I've got some physicians over here and then I'm gonna break out the detail over here of the other component. With this legend it's a little bit hard to see so what I'm gonna do is Let's go to Layout and get rid of the legend, and let's turn on Data Labels, and let's put the category name and the value on the outside and see what that looks like. So now what you can see, it's a little, you know, it'd help if I made this a little bit bigger, wouldn't it? And we're going to make you a little bit bigger, too. Now what you can see is my 2010 referrals. See, this blue-gray area now is other 167. It's a little bit close next to Dr. Jones. But, you know, we could always uh, format the data series, and you can um, make this a little bit smaller. Let's do this. See how um, this chart gets a little bit smaller, and format data series. It's 54% of the original. Let's go to about 25-ish. Now it's about 25%. Now it's a lot smaller, probably too small for the detail. But you can change back and forth. And let's go back. Oops, I got the data label instead. Let's do this format data series. Let's make it about 75% of the original chart. So now what I've got is I can see Dr. Taylor, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Miller, and around my major referring physicians. And then I've got an other in here. And other makes up a pretty good chunk. So I'm going to blow that up and say, all right, from there, other makes up Dr. Jones, Dr. Brown, Dr. Davis, Dr. Jackson, and Dr. Williams. I think, you know, from a make, making sure your users understand the pie chart perspective, you don't want people to think, oh, man, we're getting all these referrals from Dr. Jones. Because he's only 44, Dr. Miller's 182, and the pie size, you know, Dr. Jones is a bigger share of this smaller pie. So what you can do is say, I'm going to make this secondary plot size as big or as small as I want to make sure the last thing you want to, well, let me, let's look at it this way. The last thing we want to do is do this and have huge Dr. Williams at 46 and uh, Dr. Miller at 182 looks very small. So when you format your data series, you want to make sure that this is, let's say, 50, 60 percent, something in there. That's probably good enough. You And then what this gap width is, Let's fix this. And then what gap width is the is the space between this pi and this pi. The primary and the secondary pi, if you will. So what we can do is let's make it smaller first. It's going to make our data labels look goofy, but let's do about 50%. I'm not going to get too worked up about it. Now they're closer together. And now what we can do is let's make the gap, say, 300 is good enough. Now they're a lot further away. The problem is, as you make them further away and your chart's the same size, again, I've got the problem where Dr. Jones looks bigger visually. And that's why I've put the, the number in this data label. So it's obvious, hey, yeah, Dr. Jones may look big, but he's a component of this smaller piece, and Dr. Miller's still bigger. At the end of the day, I think something like, oh, that. You can explode the pies like we did last time. Um, something like that makes sense. Last thing I want to show you on this is we could also do a percentage value or a custom. So percentage value says secondary value gives everybody less than 10%. So there's the big guys and then every, I, I've got some issues in here that I'd have to format or tweak or whatever. But it shows all the big guys versus 
everybody who's less than 10%, or you can go to a custom thing and select a data point, and you can move them between the plot if there's a specific thing you want to do. I think you may find it easier to just do it by position if you want to do something custom and say, all right, I'm going to put the last four or five at the bottom, and then by position, I'm going to go through and say, give me the last three, the last eight, the whatever, and, and you can kind of force people over there. What I generally do is pick a value that works for me, and then something like that in terms of get width and plot size. There you go. It's an interesting way to show a piece of the puzzle. Let me show you one more thing while I've got you, and it'll save you watching another video on Pi of Pi. If we go over to Design and Change Chart Type, there is a similar idea right here called Bar of Pi, and all that does is put this in a bar chart, the secondary pi in a bar chart as opposed to in a pi, and then you've got some flexibility in terms of the gap between this and how big the bar chart is and stuff like that. It's the same principle. The Pi of Pi works for me, but if you want it, the Bar of Pi is there available. Hope that was helpful for you as we play with pie charts. Stay tuned next time. I got another uh, charting trick to show you. Thanks for watching.